topic is the rhythm of success. And it's really significant because as we begin the new year, many of us are looking to have a better year this year than last year. And when we look at success, when we talk about rhythm, then there's like cycles. And I think at the, at the beginning of each year, we think about the annual cycles. You know, how we look back on last year and say, oh, wow, last year was really a bummer. And uh, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. And the idea is you certainly don't want to repeat that this year. And so, as a result, this topic is very, very uh, timely because when we think about the rhythm of success, we don't normally think of success as a rhythm. The word itself comes from the Greek, um, I think it's rhyme and rhythmos, and basically it means flow, that there is a flow of success. Even when we look it up in the dictionary, Mr. Oxford and Mr. Webster, I think, have a common definition. It says, an ordered recurrent alteration, an ordered recurrent alternation of strong and weak elements in the flow of sound and silence. And so basically, rhythm, success is an alternating experience. We can look at it as the yin and the yang, as the up and the down. I often I talk about George Burns and the movie, Oh God. And in that movie, he said uh, that there was a young man talking with him, and the young man asked him, he said, well, if you're God, why do you create sickness? And why do you create pain? And God said, I never could figure out how to create an up without a down, how to create light without darkness. And so the thought of the rhythm of success is that you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have positives and negatives. And that's just the way it is. That's the way it works. You, success and failure are opposite sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. And the beauty of that is how much does this rhythm uh, impact our success? And is there a way that we can maximize the rhythm? You know, when you're, when you're with an orchestra, for example, when you, any, anytime you have a group of people uh, making music together, once it gets going, you have two or three instruments playing, say, a common note, but the sound that you get is greater than the sum of those, the, the sounds from that instrument. In other words, the fact that they're working on one accord creates a harmonic vibration where one plus one is more than two. And similarly, on your success journey, there are certain things that you can do to get into the flow where you may get more bang for your buck. Let's just put it like that. And this whole idea of the rhythm of success is really based on four principles. And these four life principles, they're simple, but when we really uh, harmonize with them, then we'll find that everything goes better. That we're able to do things that we never thought we could do before. And so the first principle is the principle of responsibility. And if there was a, uh, if there was a, uh, an affirmation, it would be, I am responsible. Whatever it is, I did it. And sometimes that's a hard one because people don't necessarily like to take responsibility for stuff. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. People don't necessarily like to say that I, I failed because I didn't work hard. I think there's a tendency to make excuses. And so if the principle of responsibility says that you are the garden 
and you are the gardener. You know, we often say life is like a garden. And so you are the garden, that which is created, but you are also the gardener, that which creates. And so as a result, if, as a gardener, if you want to have beautiful flowers, if you want to have uh, great fruits and vegetables, then you have to get into the flow. You have to understand the, the flow of the cycles of gardening. You have to plant, you have to cultivate, but you also have to pull up weeds. And one of the things about the universe is that the yin and the yang, for every positive created, there's a negative potential. As a gardener, you never have to plant weeds. I've never met a gardener who plants weeds, but yet weeds occur. So the essence of gardening is that you have to be aware of the good things that you're attempting to do, the good ideas, the good relationships, the good people, and you have to cultivate them. You have to work at them. You also have to pull up the weeds. You have to get the negative ideas out of your space, the negative people, the negative experiences out of your space. And so in this first sense, the idea that the rhythm of success is to understand the positives and the negatives of the creative process and then enhance the positive and neutralize the negative. You can't do nothing. In other words, the gardener who only plants and cultivates but who does not pull up the weeds will not be a successful gardener. Under this principle of, of responsibility, you can't make excuses. Excuses cannot create success, and success cannot dwell where there are excuses. So whatever it is, you did it. You have to stay away from denial. Many times we don't make an excuse, but we deny the existence of the situation that's confronting us. Sometimes we'll be in a, 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 you might say, a tight situation and a solution is possible, but because that solution is inconsistent with maybe how you feel about yourself. You know, there's some people that make excuses for their own inadequacies, and then they'll mask those excuses by denials. Denial of the, of the very issue. Example. Those of us in sales, when people don't buy our products, we can make excuses and say, well, they're not capable or uh, the product is not that good. It, it was a rainy day. And then we can even take excuses to the denial point by saying, well, you know what? The people in this town, they, they don't want to live longer. They don't want to be healthier. They don't want to make any money. And so, the better the excuse, the worse it is. So the principle of responsibility is very simple. It says this, if it's to be, it's up to me. And so in this new year, anything that you did not take responsibility for, any excuse that you make, especially to yourself, will undermine your success and will take you out of the rhythm of success. The second principle. There's a story of a, a great king in a far country who wanted to know the secret of life. And he commissioned the wisest people in the kingdom to go out and discover the secret of life and bring it back. They went out and they first they came back with a volume of about six books, and the king said, it's too complicated. Try it again. The second time, they came back with one book about the size of a Time magazine, and the king said, it's too complicated. Try it again. So after much deliberation and much searching, they came back with one sheet of paper, and it had two sentences on it. And sentence one said, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And sentence two said, 
everything in life you have to work for. And so the rhythm of success says that you have to put in the work before the success comes. As a matter of fact, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. As parents, sometimes I, I look at my children and I wonder if I painted a an unrealistic picture because often they saw the results of the efforts but they never saw the efforts required to get those results and as parents I think we have to think about that it's often necessary that the children see that there must be sacrifice to get results that you have to prime the pump those of us from the country, you have to pour something in that pump to get something out of it. Sometimes people get results without work. And you see, the work part is really about developing the consciousness. You know, it says, seek first the kingdom. Kingdom means consciousness. Seek first the consciousness and all these things will be added unto you. Well, you seek the consciousness by working on it, by going for it, by taking action, taking steps to achieve that which you desire. And that as you work at it, the results come. I'm often reminded of people who win the lottery, where they get the results without having really put in the work to develop the consciousness. They simply went out and, and bought a lottery ticket. There was a study that I think about 70% of them at the end of five or six years are pretty much back to where they were before. You have to say, why is that? Boy, if I got that kind of money, I'd never. Because their consciousness never grew to complement the results of their living. And so when we talk about the rhythm of success, one of the things that we must do this year is develop the consciousness, the feeling of that which we want to do that which you want to become and so this second principle is powerful because it tells us that we must always seek to find that we must always ask to get answers and we must always knock for the doors to be open you must do something the third principle, everything we do has consequences. Life is really about choices. It is said, choose this day whom you will serve. There's always a choice between good and evil, between right and wrong, between light and darkness. And there has to be a choice for you to get into the rhythm of success. Even if you don't make a choice actively, a choice is made passively. And so we basically live our life based on the choices we make and the actions we take as a result of those choices. So when we procrastinate, for example, we say, I'm not going to get started at this endeavor to change my life. You know, we're doing an eight-week class starting this Monday called New You for the New Year Transformational Webinar. And I've been noticing that we're getting a lot of registrations from people outside of the area, outside of, you know, people that I've never met before, just based on some of the, the advertising we've been doing. I was talking to one of my, and my friends, and he was saying, he said, you know, I want to take it, I'm going to wait. I got to put my money together, and I'm going to get the next cycle. Well, in other words, in choosing to do nothing, a choice is made. The world changes. And so this cycle has a special significance. The next cycle will be different. 
And so we have to always make choices affirmatively, which means that we must always have a destination. Absolutely. In other words, if we have no goals, we talk about this year, we said, if you don't have any written goals, you will fail. And the choices that we make have to be based on the goals that we've set and the goals of the stair steps to the vision that we have of ourselves. And the vision is a present representation of our purpose. The fourth principle. Everything has a season. All things have a season. The Bible says that there's a, a time to love. And there's a time to hate. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a season for everything. A time to plant and a time to harvest. If there's one principle that will impact our lives, it's the season principle. You see, everything has a, has a cycle. Everything has a, a season. The sun comes up every day. It has a rhythm. The moon rises every night. It has a rhythm. The earth turns upon its axis. It has a rhythm. The most basic rhythm that we experience in our lives is the rhythm of breathing. The absolute evidence, the proof of life is breathing. And what is breathing? Rhythm. When we breathe in and we breathe out, that the rate of our breathing determines our heart rate. When we've been running, we're breathing hard. Our heart is pumping. And so the rhythm of life starts with the breathing. The heartbeat has a rhythm. It beats at a certain rate. This is also a sense of take and give. If you take a great breath, this is an incredible breath, beautiful air on, on an on a early morning on a mountain when the air is brisk and you know that that air will, will, will benefit your body, you take in that deep breath, as good as it is, you have to release it. And so the rhythm of life is give and take. Take in, let out. And so we have these rhythms of life. They're, they're, they're physical rhythms based on physical laws, like the rhythm of gravity. If you jump out the window, you'll fall. They're spiritual laws, like the rhythm of manifestation. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be not transformed, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, you can get into the, into the success rhythm. And when you begin to harmonize with other rhythms of life, for example, the rhythm of health, that no matter what we do in our physical world, no matter how much success we have, if we do not have health, we have nothing. One of the great ones says, he who has health has everything. And so, this idea of the rhythm of success that no matter how, how diligently we apply and we seek and pursue that which we desire, we have to maintain and balance it and harmonize it with the rhythm of success. We have to take care of our bodies. We have to take care of our being. If not, it will undermine us and we will get out of rhythm and experience failure. The rhythm of beauty. Beauty brings us such, such satisfaction, such gratification that when we can see things that are pleasing to us. And you know when something is beautiful because it, it makes you feel a certain way. My daughter and I had gone for a trip to the mountains 
and there was a certain experience that I wanted her to have when you when you stand upon a mountain top and all you see is other mountains, smaller mountains, and the clouds in front of you, and you have that feeling of almost of smallness of being a part of something really big. And so some of the rhythms that we have to harmonize our success efforts are the rhythm of health, the rhythm of happiness. We must always strive to be happy. The rhythm of creativity, that patience of the work and the letting our minds soar so that we can create things that never were. The rhythm of abundance, recognizing that we deserve abundance, but abundance is like a crop. It comes in cycles. Happiness is such a beautiful rhythm because you recognize happiness because you understand unhappiness. You see, one of the things I think when we, there's so many allegorical meanings, but when we go back to the idea of the, the Garden of Eden and the, the statement that when you eat of that fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's the essence of choice. As they say, the, the lilies of the field and the birds, they want, they work not, yet they get, they receive, because they don't have to deal with choice. We as human beings have the special capacity, which is also a special obligation to choose well and to work on our choices. Rhythm always embodies three things. It embodies time. The basic definition of rhythm is flow, and flow means going from one time to another. It embodies choice. Because as the time, as we progress along the time axis in life, as we go through our our, our, our period of existence, it covers a time period. And we have no choice about that. The time goes. But then we do have the, the capacity for choice. That's number two. Time, choice, and action. And so success really maximizes itself when our time and our choices and our actions are harmonic with the universal rhythms of health, the universal rhythms of happiness, the universal rhythms of, of prosperity, the universal rhythms of work. And so these four principles now, guide us so that we can understand that we are most powerful when we are in harmony, in rhythm with the life vibrations. We are most effective when we use our time totally beneficially. In other words, when from moment to moment, this year we ask ourselves at each moment, what is the best use of my time right now? When I consider my goals, my vision, and my purpose, and then act accordingly. And so you won't stop for rest and reward too soon. You won't permit yourself to be distracted by other people's crises. You won't permit yourself to procrastinate because you know that it will take you out of that rhythm and put you into another rhythm. When our lives are out of rhythm, they're out of balance, and that's when we suffer. And so, how do we put this all together, understanding this? Number one, to realize that life is most powerful when you harmonize with all of the other rhythms. In a group, when you are two or more working on one accord, I am the making powers among them. That's the rhythm of communication and association. So recognizing 
that life is about rhythm and that you harmonize. You must get along with people. You must put in the time before you get the results. Second, to understand the power of now. Procrastination is the thief of dreams. When we look at the rhythm of success, how do we apply our time to the choices and to the actions in the most effective way? The only time to apply a choice is now. That is the, now is the only moment that you have absolute control over your response to it. Number two, do it now. The understanding the power of now, the rhythm of success dictates that you always act in the now. Someone once said that yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is cash, legal tender. So success rhythm is always about doing the most important thing right now. And the beauty of that is that when you do everything in the now, everything else takes care of itself. In other words, if you do everything today that you need to do to manifest the, the goals that you desire today, which support the goals that you desire this week. So if you do everything today that you have to do and do that every day, then the week is taken care of. That means that you've accomplished your goals for that week. If you do everything today and do it every day, the month is taken care of. If you do everything today that you had to do today, the year is taken care of. So the power of now and the power of doing it now is the key to manifestation. I tell you folks, when we look at, you might say, the principles that way, it says we can do it. It says we can make this year our year for great success. So putting these things together, the rhythm of success, the power of now, and the ability to do it now, then what is the foundation? on which it all lies. Number one, it lies on a foundation of clear goals. A foundation of clear written goals. If we do not have that foundation of clear written, clear written goals, none of this works. We become like thistles in the wind. Number two, it's based on a total commitment to daily action. To do everything today to create that daily rhythm because once we've done that everything else is taken care of. Number three, don't be discouraged because there's a rhythm to success. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. Discouragement is designed to make you stronger, make you better, make you clear. So don't be discouraged. Recognize that it's always after sacrifice that you get the blessings. And so everything that happens to you is for a purpose, and not only for a purpose, but for a good purpose. A purpose to make you grow, to make you stronger, to make you clearer. And then the fourth foundation, pillar for success, is don't quit. Persevere to the end. Knock, seek, ask. How long until you get it? When you prime that pump, when you pour the last cup of water in that pump and you keep pumping, you keep pumping until something comes out. You see, the one way we can short circuit our blessings is when we quit. And that brings about the final rhythm is the rhythm of completion. That every cycle has a beginning and an ending 
and a beginning and an ending. And so we look for success in a never-ending cycle of increase and enjoyment. My life is a never-ending cycle of increase and enjoyment. And when we work from this vibration, that we always complete ourselves, complete that which we set out to do, and do it in a pers purposeful, intentional manner. We cannot fail. When we do this, we plug into the rhythm of success, the rhythm of abundance, the rhythm of happiness, the rhythm of prosperity, the rhythm of fulfillment, the rhythm of joy, and the absolute rhythm of purpose. When we harmonize with the rhythms of life, we become magnetic and attract everything into our experience that we need to do what we want to do, to be what we want to be, and to have whatever we want to have. And so it is. The best is yet to come.